One of the things that I've learned over the years is procedures are great, but if they're not paired with the right priorities, procedures suck. Your procedures are always going to have to change depending on the circumstance because there's no way for us to plan an event exactly the way it's actually going to unfold. We can plan it the way we think it's going to unfold. The key thing that I think emergency response planners and business continuity planners and corporations have to ask themselves is, what are the key priorities from an organizational standpoint we want to convey? What's the message we want to convey? And how do we do that? And then write your procedures according to your priorities. And that's what I refer to as priority calibration. So it's really quite simple. As you're looking at a fulcrum, what you typically see in some cases is we talk about IT recovery. We look at how we're going to get the building up and running again. Um, you know, only 50% of our employees are going to make it in. Um, and how do we communicate with the other employees and our, our stakeholders like the board of directors and maybe customers? And what happens is we write our plans all based on the organization and we don't look at the other considerations and we're already lopsided. Where what we really want to have is the customer in mind, whether the customer is somebody that's paying for a service or it's an employee or other, I should have easily put stakeholder there as well. You want the two to be together. And what we see instead is, is that we usually start at the top and we look at where's our emergency operations center going to be and we cascade down the response. Whereas I think we have it backwards. And some of you will disagree with me on this. I look at where do we impact the customer, whether it's the employee or the person paying, and we work back. Because no one in the media is ever going to write an article about how well your EOC was run. They're going to write about how you didn't respond to the customer, your employees, your stakeholders. That's where the oomph behind the response is. And if we only deal with the head part and not the heart part, then we're still behind at that point. So in short, here's how a brand survives. They calibrate their priorities. So as an organization, we want to balance our response. What do we say to employees? What do we say to our stakeholders? What do we say to our customers? How are we going to get up and running again? They want to see empathy. That means you don't have someone that stands in front of a camera and says, I'd like my life back. And that means you have to make some hard decisions. And we'll talk about those hard decisions, one of the last bullet points here. Here's a four letter word that has more, more letters than four. Apologize. How many of you think that apologizing means you created the problem and you're liable now because you said, I'm sorry? Anybody? Do you know that there's apology legislation throughout the United States in certain areas? In the medical field, over 30 states have apology legislation. So if a doctor cuts off your left leg instead of your right leg and he apologized for it, you can't sue him because he apologized. I'm like, seriously? There's discussion about having apology legislation within the aviation world. If there's an accident, a CEO, CFO, CIO, a care team member should be able to apologize. Shouldn't we be able to do that anyway? There's a difference between saying I'm sorry that this has happened and uh, I'm sorry that our pilots weren't adequately trained and they didn't know that if you push or pull back on the stick shaker versus pull, pushing forward, they could have corrected the stall and everybody would have lived. Now, there's liability issue there, but apologizing for the accident, aren't you sorry that it happened? Apologize. Young brands apologized and they did it quickly and swiftly and their brand is going to do fine. Share information as often and as frequently as you can. Well, often and frequently, I guess, go together, right? If you say you're going to have information in 15 minutes, you come back in 15 minutes, you provide information, even if you don't have anything to say. I know I said I'd come back with more information. I don't have any additional information. Here's what we know, though, is happening right now. 